In this video, I will show you how to take your in-app purchase logic to the next level and make more money by using the new Glassify functions. Hey everyone, what's up? This is Simon from Galaxies.dev and today we're talking about how to make your in-app purchases and subscription logic even better. Because Glassify has a new functionality called Glassify Functions that I want to show you and this function helps you to basically execute any kind of JavaScript code whenever an event related to in-app purchases or subscriptions happens in your application. We used Glassify before for React Native, for Capacitor and you can use it with tons of other frameworks and Glassify is also the sponsor of this video. So Go check it out, glassify.io, if you want a great system to manage your in-app purchase subscription logic, especially if you're building cross-platform applications. To show you the full potential of Glassify functions, we're gonna go through three different examples. Number one, I'm gonna show you how to connect it to Slack. Number two, how to integrate this with your own Node API. And number three, how we can use Glassify functions to even trigger email sequences in stuff like MailChimp or ConvertKit. So without further ado, let's write some code. All right, let's see how we can integrate the Glassify functions in our application. The only thing that you need is an application that is using Glassify. So we had a previous tutorial where we did this with React Native. There's another tutorial with Capacitor. Just check it out on the channel. Uh, you're gonna find this. And then we're gonna use that application. Actually, I'm gonna use this React Native application that we developed before. You can find all the source code on Galaxies. Uh, there's a full tutorial, uh, also the GitHub repository. And also for the functions that we're gonna write, there's also a GitHub repository linked right below this video. So go check that out if you want to. Now, what we're gonna do is inside of Glassify, we can go to connectors and we can create different connectors. Now, there are already a few default things that existed before, but we are interested only in the Glassify function. So I'm not sure if you can see this. I'm gonna move this here and say Glassify function. For a Glassify function, we have to supply a description, the actual file and some settings. Now. We don't have a file, so let's probably write our first function and then see how we can connect this. So I've created just a simple uh, file called select.js. This is the basic requirement for a Glassify function, and it looks basically like this. On event, we have an async function, which gets an event and a context, and then we can do something with that event and the context. It's pretty easy. Um, so as a first example, I wanna show you that we can easily catch all the events and send some notifications to Slack. So I've set up a simple uh, webhook here in Slack. So let me copy this. Actually, yeah, we can probably copy this already. Uh, and we can go to my app and already add this as settings. So under settings, I will add this value will be my hook here. Uh, and then we got, let's say Slack uh, underscore URL. Now, we can use this context in our function by simply saying const url equals uh no not <laughs> process but we can say context dot settings dot settings and then followed up by whatever we used so in our case i used select url and with that we have made the function really flexible we can just have the settings basically like the environment set up here and then use it in here now in terms of the select function, it's actually pretty easy. What we need to do is we simply need to make a fetch request to the URL with a simple body that has a text and some information. I also used the specific event types. So you can filter out different event types. You can just check this out, check out the Glassify function. And at some point we should see the triggers right here. So those are the numbers of the event types I use, for example, in-app purchase or subscription started to trigger this event. Now with that in place, uh, let's open this, reveal this in Finder. So I'm gonna have this in the Finder window. I simply drag the file in here. I'm gonna call this one Slack. I make sure that this toggle is enabled uh, and then I hit save. And then I have my new function right here. I can actually send a test. I don't know what happens if I test. So this is my Slack channel right here. We're gonna keep it just up here. Uh, let's see if there's something going on if I send a test event. Yeah, there is already the test event and that works. And we can do the same now if I do an actual real purchase here in the application. So if I purchase the 100 gems in my example, uh, that should usually trigger the same stuff happening in Glassify and then it should uh, go further. So here we go. Now this purchase usually takes a few seconds in development mode, but at some point there should be an alert coming up, you're all set. 
And at the same time, we see a new event coming right into Slack saying, hey, we made some money. And you can do pretty cool things with that. Uh, if you check it out, classify Slack, view deliveries. So here's my new delivery, including the full payload. For example, number two, we're gonna use a simple note API and see how we can forward basically all the events that happen in our purchases, subscriptions, all the other events to our own API. So I already used a Node application from a previous tutorial and I just managed to make a post uh, a URL here with a webhook which accepts, accepts the webhook. Uh, it adds an event for a local uh, array. It's nothing special, but you could think of this as creating your own little dashboard for analytics or stuff in which you track all the events, you write them to your own database or you even enrich the data like I tried here by setting a user URL using the information from the Glassify event. So I'm currently running this locally and I also used ngrok to create a tunnel uh, with a real URL. And I can now use this for a new function. So let's go to connectors, create a new function. Uh, I'll definitely put my ngrok URL in here slash webhook. And of course we need to create our own little function for this now. So a function that could trigger my node API could look simply like this. I'm grabbing the API URL from the context and I'm just sending all the information right from the event to my own API. In that case, basically Glassify is the proxy for our setting. So let's call this uh, node, node API in here. I'm gonna hit, no, I'm not hitting save. I should probably first drop my uh, function in here, hit save. And then I have my new node API function. Now, uh, let's view the deliveries. I don't have anything yet. So let's change this. Um, do I have a lock in my index here? Um, I maybe do have. So let's see. If we go back here and trigger a dummy event to my node API, let's send a test event. I should see an HTTP request coming to my webhook endpoint at some point. Uh, it was already completed, so maybe it did. Let's see, we can just tr try this out with Insomnia. So I'm trying to access my own API here, slash events. And that gives me an array back of one item and another item. Nice, so it worked. It looks like I didn't have any locks in my uh, node API. So that means I have this uh, array here in memory right now of events that happened in Glassify. And because I enriched my data, I could now go, for example, to this link and it will take me directly to the customer. So I would be able, based on the Glassify information that I got on the event and enriching the data in my own API, to create my own dashboard where I could probably filter for different users, for times, for pricing, uh, for uh, different inner purchase items, and just create my own tracking or own little dashboard of functionality. So that is use case number two. Example number three is a bit more advanced and showing you more of the powers of Glassify functions. So let's say you have an email provider like ConvertKit, MailChimp, or anything like that. And you wanna add users to a certain sequence or mail campaign. You can do this, but you need to take an additional step to do this. So let me show you on the example of ConvertKit, which I'm using. So I created this little uh, sequence called in-app purchase, which should send out an email to that user once a purchase has been made. Now, how do I go about this? Well, I would of course grab from my uh, context in Glassify my ConvertKit sequence ID and the ConvertKit key, the API, to make this secure in the context. Additionally, I would have to also grab the Glassify key. So I would have to set this up. We can find this in our Glassify application under settings. So there's always the REST API key that we can use. And then we can talk to the uh, Glassify API because here's the problem. I first tried to do this and I got kind of lost in this because uh, how can I actually get the email if I check the deliveries? There's no email in it. There's just uh, some IDs and some random stuff, but hey, we got the subscriber ID. If I attach the right information to my subscriber or to the user of my application, I should be able to get that information. And exactly that is possible. So I changed the code of my application to use the Glassify SDK and call the set email user property function. And you can easily do this in your application if you have an authentication system, um, user signs in, just directly call the Glassify set email user property function. And as a result, you should be able to see under customer, your customer. 
And once you go into the customer, uh, uh, there was like a little box when I made this smaller. Yeah, we see this already at the bottom. It's usually at the side, so now it should be here. Under properties, the user now has a specific email. And with the Glassify API, we can actually query a subscriber status. Uh, we just have to pass in the subscriber ID and our REST API token, and then we get back tons of information about a specific customer. So in terms of code, we could now do the following. We could, of course, um, no, this is not the function. Where's my function? Here it is. So we do have the subscriber ID already from the event. And what we want to do first is we want to make a call to the Glassify API using my subscriber ID and the Glassify key that we extracted from the settings. With that information, we could now create the body with an email based on the JSON data and my ConvertKit key. And finally, I can follow this up with another fetch call to the ConvertKit API to subscribe the user with that email to a certain sequence. So I already set this function up in Glassify uh, under connectors. I do have my email campaign set up right here. And just a second ago, when we made that transaction, the following email arrived in my inbox. Thank you for your purchase. If there's anything else, let us know. And I should be subscribed here. Uh, yeah, I was just subscribed to the sequence when I made the purchase uh, in my testing application here. And you can imagine there are different triggers like starting a subscription, buying a specific item, upgrade, downgrade or um, expired uh, subscription. And you could now directly react to these different events and probably trigger different sequences in your mailing system. You could do push notifications. Um, you can try to recover payments. You can try to use upgrades or coupon codes. And there's just a lot that you can do at this point with the Glass 5 function by simply reacting to what's going on in your app, having the flexibility to have basically any kind of cloud function attached to that event. So eventually you can make a lot more money by recovering money, upsells or anything else related to the life cycle of your users. All right, and that's it for today's quick update on Glassify functions. I hope you enjoyed this. I certainly enjoyed this feature. So when Glassify contacted me and I checked this out, I was like, wow, this is really a great idea indeed. And I know you've been loving Glassify. You left a lot of comments under the Capacitor and the React Native videos. So I really hope you enjoy this one. Give it a try, glassify.io. You can get started up until 10K revenue for free. And the team is really helpful. So if you got any problems, just leave a comment. They usually check it out or check them out on Twitter. And of course, try the new Glassfire functions. If you're not yet subscribed to the channel, of course, do that and leave a like to this video and share it with your friends who also need an in-app purchase logic for their React Native, Capacitor or any other kind of application. And I will catch you in the next video. So until then, happy coding, Simon.